Hello, this will be a somewhat quicker video. Um, it, it'll be pretty much removing the, the seat belt, the B pillar panel, and then the lower kick panel of a escort sedan. Um, it's pretty easy to do. First thing you'll want to do is remove all the screws from the kick panel. There'll be just a couple in the back and then a couple up front. Uh, and then next, you'll be removing these plastic pivot covers on the ends of the seat belt. So for the lower one, you have a few options. Probably the best one is just push it down like so. Pry the rear out, and it'll just pop off. You can see those two clips. That's kind of how it works. Set that to the side, and that exposes the lower shackle and pivot bolt. Up top, find the best way to do that, do this one. Swing it upwards, and then you'll press here with a thumb or a finger onto this little tab, and then you're able to pop that up. Now that's free and clear. And then with those plastic little cover panels removed, you have full access to both both of the pivot bolts for the seat belt. So we'll start with the lower one just because it's down here on the floor. Uh, what you'll use is just a T50 uh, Torx socket, so that's the Torx size 50, now that's your six point uh, star. Um, I have to use a bigger one because the, from the factory you'll, you'll see when I remove this, uh, but from the factory a lot of times they use uh, you know, a thread locker, you know, sometimes it's the red stuff, um, on certain parts you'll see the blue stuff. Um, and it'll make these guys pretty darn hard. So what you'll want to use is a bigger bit and a bigger wrench. I got a big old uh, foot and a half wrench. And it takes these guys out pretty good. Uh, otherwise, with some bits you could be twisting the tops and well, you don't want that because you'll just have to stop what you're doing, go to the store, grab a new bit. That's no good. Uh, but you can't really use heat because obviously on the bottom it's surrounded by nothing but flammable carpet. And then up top it's uh, it's a lot of plastic and rubber you, you got to avoid as well as the seat belt itself. So it's just best to go with a bigger wrench and a big bit that can actually handle the power because the, the rear one, it, not the rear, sorry, the, the bottom bolts, they torque in there really hard and then the and the top ones are fairly hard depending on the car and of course if your car is rusty they're even more of a chore to deal with but so we have that removed this is what they look like you can see there's the the shackle it just happens to be blue then there's a little keeper it keeps the the shackle from uh, wiggling too much on this bolt and then after that is just a rubber spacer set this off to the side because uh, now we can work without things dangling in our way. We'll remove this top one here. Uh, obviously I had loosened both of these already but the top one is still just a T50 just like the other one. Um, and the, it's, it's really similar to that bolt. On my EXPs these all seem to be the same. Uh, the tops and bottoms. But there's nothing to this one. It's just a bolt. And then the seat belt pivot retainer thing. It actually has a coating of a plastic rubber on it, so that alone becomes the uh, the spacer slash washer insulator thing for that. And then we'll set that also off to the side, because now we can remove all the trim pieces. So this upper trim piece, you can see there is a screw hole, so once you remove the seat belt, you have great access to that. Otherwise, you can move the belt out of the way, but then this guy does this while you're trying to work on the seat belt, and it's not quite ideal. Um, but anyhow, once that screw is out, it'll flop like that, and then all that's left up here is going to be one of the uh, common trim trim pieces in this car, or these little uh, panel pop tab things. So they just push them to the metal um, after you fit them onto the trim pieces. For the door, door cards, it's the same piece. 
Uh, and then for the door cards, it's the same thing. You, you put them into the little key slots, just like these guys, and then you install the panel onto your, you know, your car's unibody. So that's how that works. So with these, they're pretty easy to remove. Uh, I took this off immediately yeah, because then I can show you the best way to go about it. So if we pretend this is still up and mounted, you'll be taking a separator like this, body panel separator, or a pry bar. But uh, I prefer these guys. I get a little bit more leverage out of these. So you'll set them in places like this. Um, I recommend just above or just below so, so you're not distorting this. Uh, but get near it, pop it away on the bottom, and then do the same up top. And the pop tab for the top is high up here. You can see the headliner is kind of covering the hole a little bit. Uh, but it's just the same procedure for the top one. That's kind of the one you'll want to make sure you get just like this. So try to get that as close as you can. And if you do that, it'll just pop right off. And you can see on the bottom, uh, someone was in here before me and they had actually removed this from that some way, somehow. Um, but otherwise, uh, these guys just slide in and out. Um, so when you put your, your panel back on, you will need a few of these to, to replace. As you see, when this one, when I pry it up against this one, it left half of its stuff behind in that hole and it fell down. Uh, but that's kind of how it goes with these darn plastic pot tabs. They, they are just flat out disposable, sadly. So set that off to the side actually we'll put it in here so when when I go to replace these I'll know exactly what hardware they should be having inside of them now with that upper piece removed uh, well, actually you only need to to loosen the lower the lower half of this piece so once you remove the screw it's got enough of that pop out flexibility to allow this to move and then oh, you can see there there's a gap here and that is just so the seat belt can go in and out of here just like that to da and I've removed all the screws on this lower kick panel so once I get the, the belt out of the way here you can pick that up and there we have it we'll set that there for now <clears throat> and now you have full access to your seat belt um, locking mechanism as well as the recoil and retract retracting mechanism so um, I'll pause the video real quick and we'll we'll try uh, removing that in the jiffy here so hold on a second so kind of like the 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 two hinges on the seat belt um, this whole recoil mechanism is only held in by the one big torx bolt and again it's a E50, just like the, the other ones for the seat belt. Here we are. You can see that. No shoulder though, um, but does have a little bit of blue Loctite on it. So once you've removed that, this whole unit slides just straight out. Just like that. See that's a locating tab thing. And we'll set that there for now. And we'll move our attention to the, the locking button. So I moved to the outside of the car and this is the locking button. Um, I'm not too totally sure how it works. It, and it's, it's simply because on these cars they've become so old where these just aren't completely reliable. Um, they're, they're kind of like the, if, if you have an EXP, you'll have a locking button on the back of the seat like right here just just in reach for your fingers to grip um and sometimes that locking button won't always work so it's hard to know what they do um, but it, it keeps the seat from it, it allows the seat to tilt forward but it keeps it from just flat out falling forward 
um, you know, so when it's working and when it's not, you'll have different seat movement. And this guy's kind of the same way. When it works um, and when it doesn't work, it, it's it's hard to tell the difference unless yours has been perfect for some time and you, you, you're able to see exactly what it does. But kind of theory is this, uh, when this guy is pushed, it, you're able to move your seat belt. When it's open, it should kind of lock. Um, but they are pretty easy to remove. There's just this plastic collar on the outside. Uh, but you should be aware that if you're attempting to remove this, uh, assume that this collar will be destroyed. They just they just don't <laughs> they don't they don't last this maneuver. And I've I tried a million ways to Sunday. And it's just because some some get harder than others. But you just go in there and you pry it up gently. And you can see it popped out, flung at me, uh, yeah, caught right in my lap here, <laughs> um, and there it took no damage. Usually, what happens is these two, these two uh, click tabs, just break off, just completely destroy themselves. Um, and then usually this how this little plastic ring just cracks, but that's. It's easily fixable. I can fix that. And now you can see what's going on inside. Now, in theory, you're able to just take this guy and spin it, and out it comes. So you'll want to try to do that first, uh, but I kind of know better. <laughs> um, these guys are usually in there pretty deep. It's kind of hard to get your fingers on there, and when you do, there's not much grip to these guys but you do see these two lines here. So the point of those lines is let me get this button set to in the correct position. Where these two lines are, they'll be somewhat vertical on your car like this. That's, uh, pay attention to this top line here. Should be vertical. Now once you turn them horizontal, this ring will just slide on off. Uh, but usually what happens is gunk uh, tar from the interior insulation and a number of other things will just build up in here. It'll make it awfully hard to turn this guy. So what you can do instead is uh, put your hand on it to just hold it steady and then turn it from the back side. You turn this 90 degrees and it will let loose from this outer plastic lock ring. Now with the lock ring removed you can take you can take the button, turn it 90 degrees like I said, and it will just wiggle on out. And you can see what I was talking about, because they put a rubber spacer insulator thing on here, and sometimes there's tar around that, yep, or sometimes they become tar. So it's a number of issues, but that's kind of how you take care of it. Oh, and I should correct myself, I'm sorry. Turning this ring does not allow it to come off easily, and that's why it's never worked for me. Turning it does not allow it to come off easy, or uh, where it sits is only, only up here and down here. So you will not be able to turn it. Should you try turning it, that is when it will break. Um, so yes, your only choice is to pry it off like I showed, and if it survives, that's that's great. But if, if not, um, <laughs> Kind of, kind of saw it coming, I hope. But um, anyhow, that kind of concludes everything we're talking about. It completely removed the seat belt. It completely removed the lower kick panel, and it completely removed the B pillar interior panel. So we're able to stop the video now. I know this was kind of longer than uh, what I expected, and it might be longer than what you expected, but hopefully it helped. Insulation is the same thing, but backwards. Like I said, I kind of pointed out the tricks on all the panels. Um, and the big thing when installing the toe kick is that it goes over the other pieces. Because once you bolt it down, it holds that down, holds the carpet down, and then it also pinches uh, the door gaskets, like these kick panels do. So, yes, we'll stop now and uh, keep an eye out for future videos. Uh, we'll have a lot more on this Red Escort interior real soon. Thanks.